Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the bunker, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to the Cyan P1800, based on the Volvo P1800. I say it's my pleasure because ever since I laid eyes on this car, which actually wasn't that long ago, it went around the internet, it sort of exploded online, and I thought, you know what, one day I would love to see this car. Obviously these guys are uh, being heavily involved with Volvo, they're based out in Sweden, and lo and behold, they're over here for a short amount of time, and we've managed to grab their time and attention to bring this car down to the bunker, and what a car it is. Right now, it's fantastic time for petrol heads and uh, driving purists because the resto mod scene is exploding and this is one of the latest greatest and you'll see why it's one of the greatest by the end of this video because the details and engineering which cyan have put into this car is incredible bit of an overview of the significance of Cyan is that they have been running Volvo racing cars for a long time now. They've been running Volvos in the World Touring Car Championships, been doing very well and have been in it for quite a long time, but they have taken their distilled petrol head passion and driving enthusiasm and thought, you know what, we can create something very special in-house and this is their vision. Now, for those of you not familiar with the P1800, this car originated in the 60s. This came before the Shelby Cobra. It came before even the 250 GTO. So this, this platform um, is actually pretty old school, but what these guys have done to make this a thoroughbred driver's car is fascinating. So pretty much every panel that you can see is made out of, you guessed it, carbon fiber. I say that not just because it's trick, but because the car is all about weight saving. This car with its lightweight lithium ion battery spec is 990 kilograms. Uh, why that's cool is because the touring car engine <laughs> that this thing is running under here, which we shall share with you shortly, is uh, running 420 horsepower. So the power to weight ratio in this light car 420 horsepower driven entirely through the rear wheels will be a fascinating driving experience of which we shall share with you shortly. But first of all, uh, let me share with you some of these really sexy details. Funnily enough, I'm about to start with the wheels. So join me down here. Now, what I quite like is this juxtaposition of quite a contemporary wheel with this classic styling of the body. I love the fact that it's a nod to their racing heritage with the central locking wheel nuts. But what is cool is that inside those is fitted these AP racing brakes. Now, this car is about as organic as it gets. Remember, I touched on that 420 horsepower sub 1000 kilogram weight. Uh, there is also no traction control and no ABS. So it'll be fascinating to see what this thing feels like. It has quite a nice long wheelbase. So no doubt when it does let go, it's probably quite a graceful slide. But the guys at Cyan have said this has been developed for driving pleasure. While it is a fast car, the priority here isn't lap times. It's all about good times. Speaking of which, I think we just jump to the engine. I'm saving the interior for later because it's absolutely gorgeous in there. But first of all, let's just check out this. Uh, this is arguably one of the more significant parts of the car because at their heart, these guys are a racing team. Behold, two liter Volvo engine, but as I mentioned, 420 horsepower. And look at the packaging of it. These parts here, these are still steel, but that's where it stops. So carbon, carbon wings, everything is to do with keeping it really pure and clean. Now the engine is a turbocharged engine, but they've done a fantastic job of actually aesthetically hiding the turbo quite far down under just to keep it looking natural and, and clean. And when you look in here, I don't know how they've managed to package this thing so well. There's hardly, there's like very few cables. Uh, it just looks a beautiful, simple thing. And I think in this day and age, you know what I mean? Like everything's going sort of hybrid, excessive horsepower from 2000 horsepower, electric cars and things like that. And then you've got these guys doing the opposite end of the spectrum, developing something with with manual gearbox, three pedals, and a good old clean engine bay. It almost inspires you to roll up your uh, sleeves and get stuck in, it just looks so pure. But what is special about this is the knowledge that Cyan have of years of racing and developing these very special engines. So they have told me that it is quite capable of developing over 500 horsepower. Uh, they also tell me when you drive this at 420, you definitely won't need it. <laughs> so it'll be really interesting to see what this thing feels like. That. It's very hard to convey the weight on film, but take it from me, that is super light. And one thing I will show you, which is quite trick, 
uh, which is one of the one of the very few lasting original components from the P1800 is the way that the uh, boot latch retracts the boot. So instead of a crude slamming of the bonnet, the same lever underneath the dash here is also the same lever which gracefully sucks closed the engine bay. How cool is that? Okay, so a lot of what you can't see is what's taken place underneath the body of the car. The little steel which is remaining in this has been swapped out for much more modern, higher grade, higher tensile steel. And that is built in conjunction with the carbon fiber components as well, because the original body torsional rigidity, well, there basically was none. This is a sort of, you know, 60s car. In terms of making that into a performance car, the work and engineering that Cyan have had to put into this to make the actual torsional rigidity of the chassis be able to cope with the, the torque, the power, the dynamics and handling. They've basically re-engineered everything. But there are still some original steel components in here. Uh, they've also had to maintain uh, the layout of the A and B pillars. Other than that, it's pretty much bespoke to Cyan. Speaking of bespoke, I love this. Small detail, this sort of signature feature of various resto mods is becoming a thing, isn't it? But I just love those central fuel filler caps. Also, you might be wondering why the blue and yellow, this is the colors of the Cyan racing team. So with this being their very first car, they thought it was appropriate to fit it out like that. And then we come around to, of course, the centrally mounted exhaust, which also I just think ties it off wonderfully and symmetrically in line with the uh, boot catch and fuel filler cap. In fact, I might be able to show you, but the inside here isn't actually finished. As I mentioned, this is a, this is a, uh, their very first car, but I just wanted to show you the extent of the carbon fiber work. So this is the fuel tank here. All right. The business section of the car. You might have noticed that you have to step over an inbuilt cage. Everything's quality. The cage itself wrapped and stitched in leathers, which gives you an idea of the attention to detail. Uh, there's so much sort of natural wool in here too. All of this inlay on the dash, I mean, it's sort of contrasted with leather. We have non-airbag, no fussy buttons, nothing. Momo Prototipo driving wheel. Again, Prototipo wheel from Momo is classic proven wheel. This actually does run through a servo assisted steering rack. Um, haven't driven it yet, but we, we shall share with you how that feels shortly. Although the guys from Cyan have told me that the calibration of this isn't as they would want it right now, but because it has pretty fat sticky front tires if you didn't have any servo assist it might be a bit heavy if you were to uh, use this thing around town and then of course where things get really important and interesting is right here and down there five speed manual gearbox clutch brake pedal and throttle and by the feel of things it's wonderfully placed for Heel toe. Fun fact, uh, Cyan actually teamed up with a gearbox manufacturer from Australia called Hollinger. Now the reason they did this was because they wanted to maintain period correct feel of their gear shifter, but they still needed the gearbox to be able to deal with the torque of a modern day, be it touring car developed engine. So they went specifically for both feel and quality. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it feels, but it is it's a beautiful snick snack box. Bear in mind that this originally was never designed to deal with anything like the amount of power that this thing has now. Yeah, everything's rather beautiful. Speaking of which, let's find out how it drives.
need to. There's so many revs there to play with. 7,700. It takes a little bit of adopting because at first you're like, is this going to go there? Is it going to bounce off the limiter? And then it pushes past from 5 to 7. It's amazing. Great feeling. And the gearbox, while it does feel old school, there's very positive shifts between each gear. Ultimately, the actual travel of the mechanism itself is quite short, but because it's on this long stalk, it probably feels a little bit longer than it actually is. But I guess that's part of the, the old school feel of it, really. It's not about having that shorter GT3 style throw. That, that would, wouldn't be quite as in keeping with what the ethos of the car is all about. It's all about maintaining that sort of authentic feel to a degree, but having the modern componentry and driving experience under it. But what's great is this has been developed by the guys that build racing cars. So this is the guys from Cyan doing the ultimate resto mod of one of Volvo's historic products. <laughs> and you can hear the turbo flutter as you lift off. Take on it. 
which is different from someone who might only focus on road cars. They all have their own feelings about them, and this is absolutely no exception. It's very, very cool. So half a million dollars, what, 300,000 pounds? there we have it back at base uh what a machine uh, it's so good to get behind the wheel of this thing as i mentioned as we drove out never expected to be in this car so soon i actually didn't expect to see it let alone drive it so first of all massive thank you to the guys from cyan for bringing it down here and what a thing it is uh, just to recap i think it's all about the power to weight that 420 brake 990 kgs and as i mentioned because these things are ultimately built or designed around something that was uh, built in the 60s it has a completely unique character i'm struggling really for what i would compare it with and that's perfect because it is its own thing you know so yeah i'd love to hear from you as mentioned the whole resto mod scene as good as it's ever been so i'd love to hear from you questions and comments below what you think about this what you would like to know and hopefully uh, we'll get to uh, try this in the summer when we've got a bit more uh, traction so let me know and i'll answer it next time as always thank you so much for watching and i shall see you next time ciao